G'day. This is a review of three vaporizers used for treating beehives with oxalic acid. I'm going to look at the gas vap, the instant vap, and the Lorib Bees vaporizer. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm doing this review because I got sent a gas vap from the UK and I promised to review it and I decided instead of reviewing it on its own it'd be a great idea to line it up against two other vaporizers one being the instant vap which I've reviewed in the past as a standalone review I've chosen the Lorib Bees vaporizer because it's a mid-range vaporizer the difference between the three is that the gas vap runs on gas the instant vap runs on lithium iron batteries and the Laura B's vaporizer runs from a cord. I've chosen five key variables for this review to assess each of the three vaporizers against. They are effectiveness, ease of use, durability, the upfront initial cost of purchasing the unit and everything that has to go with it in order to be able to use it in the field, and the actual running cost of each unit per hive treated. Now that's not including the cost of the oxalic acid, which clearly if you're using the same doses across uh, all different types of vaporizers, then those costs aren't going to vary. I want to stress from the beginning that this review is based on my personal opinions. Your opinions may differ. All the figures that I use in this review are in New Zealand dollars and all the costings are based on getting the vaporizers here to New Zealand. So there is some freight involved, but it's not a massive amount. And if you took it out, it wouldn't change the outcome of this review. As you'll see, as I go through it, a couple of the variables are the same across all three vaporizers and therefore have no impact on the outcome of the review. But I've included them to make the point that they're the same across all three vaporizers. The other important point to note, I've arbitrarily allocated the same weighting to each of the variables that I'm assessing. It's highly likely that different beekeepers will attribute more weight or less weight to individual variables and therefore may come up with a different result to what I have. For example, the initial cost might be a big factor for some people, particularly those that are not running all that many hives. And for other people, it might not factor in at all. Durability is another factor, which again, if you've got lots and lots of hives and you're treating them, it'll be a really important influence on your decision. And finally, the cost of each treatment per hive is going to really matter for a large scale operation, for a hobby operation, the differences in total outlay will be negligible and therefore may not carry much weight at all. So let's start with the first variable, effectiveness. As you can see, I've scored all three vaporizers 10 out of 10. Does that mean that each vaporizer is always going to be 100% effective? No, because it's going to depend on how you use it. But they've all got an equal opportunity to be effective if you do your job right. If you've got hives that have got brood in them, then a single treatment won't be very effective. You'll have to do multiple treatments. Four or five treatments at about four day intervals is what many people recommend. There's a lot of variation around that. If you've got a broodless hive, one treatment may well do the job. Personally, I wouldn't take the risk. I'd be treating more often to be 100% certain. The next variable is ease of use. I've scored both of the cordless vaporizers, that's the gas vap and the instant vap, at 10 out of 10. And I've scored the Lorib Bees vaporizer 5 out of 10 because you have to drag a cord around your bee yard and you have to have a power source for that vaporizer, whereas the other two carry their power source with them. Durability is the next variable. I've scored the gas vap 7 out of 10. It hasn't broken on me, but just looking at it, it appears to be of quite lightweight construction. If I was to be using it in a large beekeeping enterprise, I would expect it to break sooner or later, even when it's been used correctly. The Instant Vap and the Laura Bees Vaporizer are both robustly built, so I've scored them both 10 out of 10 and the Gas Vap 
7 out of 10. The next variable is safety. All three of these vaporizers are scoring at the same level and it's not 10 out of 10, it's 8 out of 10. There is some risk associated with using these vaporizers. When I did a video about the gas vap, one of my viewers kindly commented that when using the extension tube, there's a risk that because the vapor cools down that it can clog up in the end and if it gets completely blocked, the whole thing can burst apart in your face. Well, actually, I've had a similar thing happen in, with the instant vap when I inadvertently did something with it that blocked the spout. A block, and I'm quite certain that a block spout would also cause the cap to burst off with the Laura B's vaporizer. It's a risk that applies to all of them. The gas vap is quite hot, but as you would have seen if you watched my last video about it, it only takes a few tries to work out how to handle it in a way where you don't have to touch anything that's hot while it's operating. Now I'm going to come to the two variables that relate to the financial costs of obtaining and running these units. To do this analysis, I created a great big complicated spreadsheet. I'm not going to run through that line by line because this video would end up being an hour long and most of you would have fallen asleep. Here it is. I'm just going to scroll past it on the screen. You can freeze frame and look at it more closely if you want to. But what I will do is summarize the results of it as part of this review. So here is the summary of my analysis of the setup cost and the running cost. Now just a couple of pointers, like I said, I'm not going into it in too much detail. All these figures are in New Zealand dollars. The setup cost of each unit includes everything you need to get it running. So for the gas vap, it includes getting it to New Zealand and buying gas bottles. Actually, while I'm talking about gas bottles for the gas vap, in my last video, I was running it on a big propane bottle, which I acknowledged in that video was not ideal, but I had it on hand. I've subsequently found that I can buy butane gas. I can buy four cylinders of butane gas, each one 220 grams of gas, for $5.99 here in New Zealand. And that's way, way cheaper than the propane gas, which where a 400 gram bottle was $21. So all my costings here are based on using that butane gas. With the instant vap, I have included the cost of buying the vaporizer, the cost of buying batteries to go with it, three, because if you're a reasonable sized beekeeper, at least three are necessary to get a reasonable number of hives done in a day. And I've also included the cost of an inverter wired into your beekeeping truck. The reason I've done that is because my friend that owns the Instant Vap that I reviewed in a previous video, I'll put the number of the video here. That's what he did because he found even with all of the batteries that he had, he couldn't go out beekeeping for a whole day without his batteries running out. So he ended up spending another 350 New Zealand dollars to buy an inverter and get an auto electrician to permanently wire it into his truck so he could be recharging batteries between apries. Likewise, with the Laura B's vaporizer, I've included the cost of a $600 generator to go with it so that you have power on site. Now, obviously, if you're a hobby beekeeper and you've got a long extension cord that reaches your apiary, you can take that cost out. A generator, in my view, is a better option than an inverter because there's a real risk that you'll run your vehicle batteries flat running a unit like the Laura B's vaporizer all day. Another point I'd make about the instant vap running costs is that I've included both the cost of the electricity to recharge your batteries and the cost of the batteries spread out over a thousand recharges, which is the manufacturer's recommendation for most of those batteries, times 50 hives per treatment. In my view, batteries are a consumable, so I've included them in the running cost. So as you can see, the gas vap is in the middle for running costs per hive, but it is the cheapest to buy and get set up. The 
Instant VAP is the cheapest to, to run per hive, but it's the most expensive to buy and get up and running. The Laura Bees is almost as expensive as the Instant VAP, not quite, but it's significantly more expensive to run because petrol's so expensive here in New Zealand. Again, this exercise is done in New Zealand. If you're in the States, I know you pay a lot less for gas. Gas, <laughs> that's confusing, isn't it? Gas for you is, is petrol for me. Going back to my scoring, for setup costs, I've given the gas vap 10 out of 10, the instant vap 4 out of 10, and the Laura Bees vaporizer 7 out of 10. In terms of running costs, I've given the gas vap 10 out of 10, I've given the instant vap 7 out of 10, and the Laura Bees vaporizer 4 out of 10. In summary, just saying again, I'm giving each of these variables the same weighting and you may choose not to do that. The total score that these three vaporizers get when compared against each other is 55 out of 60 for the gas vap, 49 out of 60 for the instant vap, and 44 out of 60 for the Laura B's vaporizer. Don't forget, if you like my videos, give them a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate it if you did. It helps the algorithm and helps get my videos out there. So in conclusion, which one's the best one? And the answer to that is, it depends. It depends on what your priorities are. If you're trying to save cash in the initial purchase, the gas vat would definitely come out on top. If electricity supply to your apries is via an extension cord, the lower B's unit would probably come out on top. And if the initial outlay is no obstacle for you and you like the idea of something that's cordless, then you might opt for the instant vap. Whichever way you go, good luck with your beekeeping. Keep on top of those mites and thanks for watching.